the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 115, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All you have, serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord he is God. He is the one who has made us. We are his people. We are the sheep of his, of his pasture. Enter into his gates with praise. Give him thanks. Bless his name. The Lord, our God, is good. Hallelujah. Father, we want to worship you. We want to exalt your holy name. We want to give you praise. Father, we enter into your courts with praise. We give you thanks. Hallelujah. Lord, we we'll bless you. Lord, we we'll bless you. Thank you because your steadfast love endures forever. It never stops. It never ceases. Oh, Lord, we worship you. We worship you. You are faithful from one generation to all generation. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We adore you this morning. We adore you, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Lord, omnipotent, Jehovah Jireh, Lord, we lift you on earth, we bless you, we bless you, sing unto the Lord, all ye earth, proclaim the goodness of the Lord, sing unto him, declare his glory among the nations, oh, Father, we bless you, we bless you. You are wonderful among all your people, Lord. The Lord is great and is greatly to be praised. Let us begin to adore him. Let us worship him. Let us give him praise. Let us honor him. Daddy, we worship you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jeremiah 13, 19 says, Out of their mouth proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of those that make merry, I will multiply them. Ah, they will not be little. They will not diminish. I will glorify them. They shall not be small. Because we have come to give thanks unto the Lord. Ha! Rebo soto robo shendegere. We have come to give thanks and to give praise unto he that was, that is, that is to come. Father, we give you praise. We adore you. The Bible says we will not diminish, but we will multiply. We will increase in the name of Jesus. That tells me that after this plague is over, we will count and we will multiply. We will have increased. We will not diminish in the name of Jesus. None of us will be lost. None of us in the name of Jesus will be lost to this plague in Jesus' name. Let us just begin to worship him and begin to declare that testimony to ourselves. The word of God is good. The word of God is solid. The word of God is testimony. We, we can stand on it. We can stand on it. The word of God has life bring forth. Father, we want to bless you. Thank you for that promise, O oh God. Ah, Lord, we give you praise. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. First Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18 says, Rejoice always. Pray without season. And in everything, give thanks unto the Lord. In everything, give thanks unto the Lord. For this is the will of God. We have come before the Lord, our God, with art of gratitude. Let us begin to thank him for who he is. Let us begin to thank him for who he is. Let us begin to thank him for being faithful in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Isaiah 49, 10 says, Thank him for he is good and his messes endures forever. Father, we just want to bless you this morning. We're here with a heart full of gratitude. We want to worship you. We want to give you praise. We want to give you praise. We want to exalt you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, ancients of days. Oh, thank you. Thank you because your counsel alone will stand. Thank you, Father, because you are the one that declare and bring to pass. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. Let us begin to thank God for the gift of life. Let us begin to worship him. Let us thank him. Let us thank him. 
come before him with thanksgiving and exalt him with multiple string of music, of song. Just praise this God. Praise him the way you can in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we worship you. Our Lord is good. Our God is great. There is no God beside you. There is none like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are wonderful in your deed. You are beautiful for situation. You are the God of today, the God of yesterday, the God forevermore, the God that never fails. Daddy, we give you praise. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us begin to thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that is on the inside of us, or oh, which equips us, which tells us we're not alone, the power of God, the power of God in us that can see us through every situation, every circumstances, the power of God in us that can create, the power of God that can we can declare and we know it will come to pass because we have not done it by our own mind or by our own strength but by the spirit of the lord holy ghost we welcome you can we just welcome the holy spirit oh shower some blessings we thank you for your presence oh god thank you sweet holy spirit for your presence we welcome you we welcome you we declare this morning holy spirit we surrender all to you as you take over will you take over we thank you we thank you because you are our helper we're not here here to, to preach the wisdom of men, but we're here to, to, to feed on the bread of life. Oh, the Spirit, oh, the Spirit, help us, oh God, quicken our mortal bodies, quicken our mortal bodies, that we may receive of you, that we may receive from you, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, a well of water on the inside of us, springing out, springing out to internal life. That is the strength of God in us. That is the, the life of God in us. When the Lord breathed, the Bible says the Lord created Adam and he breathed the breath of life into him. That is still the life we have as of today. When that breath leaves, the body becomes empty. But that breath is the life of God in us. And the Holy Spirit has come to quicken, to help that life in us, to produce what the Lord has created it to do. Holy Ghost, help us this morning. In the name of Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Oh, you are the well of life. Now, Pablo, show that that spring out to internal life. Love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Spirit. Thank you, sweet Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Romans, Romans 8, 11 says, if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of us, he that raised Christ from the dead can quicken our mortal bodies in the name of jesus by the power that lives on the inside of us it can quicken our mortal bodies there is healing in the spirit of god there is promotion in the spirit of there is deliverance there is there is everything you can think of everything you can think of the holy spirit can quicken your mortal body to begin to receive from heaven holy spirit help us this morning in the name of jesus let us begin to thank god because we know the lord will Walk in us, he will teach us how to truly give him praise, how to truly worship him, how to truly experience and praise him as we go through our day to day activities. Father, we want to thank you for our daily walk with you. Thank you for our daily walk with you, no matter where we are. Father, thank you because you will help us to see the goodness of God and we will be able to say thank you father we will be able to praise you in every circumstances because we know when we pass through the water you are with you are there with us when we pass through the fire you are always there with us oh father thank you thank you thank you for who you are thank you thank you father let us begin to pray and thank God for revival in our days in the name of Jesus in the church of 
God, we want to thank God for revival. We want to thank God for our spiritual life, our individual life, even as everybody is staying home, is staying home. We want to pray that there will be a move where people will begin to develop on their own and will see this season of rest as a season to actually grow in the name of Jesus and be, be, be dynamic with the things of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, help us so that thank you. Thank you for this season of rest as we begin to understand you more, as we begin to study at your feet, as we grow in you in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to thank God for insight into his plan. The gifts of God, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the purpose for our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you because we know you created each and every one of us. Oh Lord, for, for a purpose. You created us. You said you have the plans you have for us. Oh Lord, it's the plan to prosper, the plan to give us a hope and a future. Father, we thank you for that plan. We thank you for that purpose of which we are created. We thank you because we will find it. We will know it we will walk in it in the name of jesus we will be able to say lord that which you have committed unto me i have performed i have completed in the name of jesus when we eventually stand before you lord help us so god help us so god to, to determine our purpose to, to to figure it out in the name of jesus Help us, O God, that we will walk according to your plan and not according to the plan of man in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to thank God for protection over our nation, over all uh, around this season. We can we cannot thank God. Uh, uh, we can, we cannot thank God too much. We can we, we we can give him praise for all that is going on. But at the same time, when we sow the seed of thanksgiving, we know like the Lord Himself will step into the situation. We're thanking God in advance to protect the nation, to protect our loved ones, to protect us ourselves, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to keep us. The Bible says in Psalm 1226, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're going to be praying for the peace of our nations, and we know the Lord in his infinite mercy will step in and take over. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, thank you. Thank you for your protection. Thank you because this plague sees in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because this plague sees in the name of Jesus. Thank you for insight and wisdom on how the, the medical team can, can combat this and come up with something. Father, but we thank you overall because you are stepping in and you are stopping the gate of hell in the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you honor, adoration. In the marvelous name of Jesus have we praised. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our topic today is we, we are in the month, and I want to welcome everyone to the other half of the year. God has been faithful. It's already July, and God has just been faithful. The theme for this month is walking in power. And then we're going to be looking at the power of imagination, power of imagination. And uh, I remember, you know, when I was um, getting ready to start preparing for this message, my husband and I were just talking and we were like, you know, what are the basic ways that the Lord really speaks to people? What are those, you know, what are those basic ways you can receive from God. And, um, you know, we talked about it first day, second day, and the third day I was just trying to prepare and God brought me here. So I guess um, this is what God wants us to look at at this time. And, um, you know, it kind of answered the question that we've been debating for maybe some few days. And we're going to be illustrating the power of imagination uh, with the story of Abraham, uh, when Abraham was uh, hanging out with God and God was ready to introduce him to destiny. God was ready to introduce him to destiny. And that can be found in Genesis 15, 1 through 5. 
And the Bible says the word of God came to Abraham in a vision. This was the first time I noticed that word vision. So we're going to hold on to that. He said the word of God came to him in a vision. And I believe that because of what God was planning to do, you know, God wants to give Abraham a sense of direction. He gave him a vision to give him a sense of direction. And the, he says, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceeding great reward. Um, and Abraham said, because this is what has been on his mind, serving Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? The one, the, the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. A servant in my household will be my heir. And the second thing says, that is verse 4. Verse 4 says, then the word of God came to him. So the word of God came to him. First it was vision, then it was the word. And then the Bible says, you know, the, the, the word of God is actually, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So we're talking about, you know, the revelation from the book, the, from the Bible. And then it said, the word could also be word of wisdom. It could be word of knowledge. It could be uh, uh, the zanning of the spirit. And he said, this one will not be your hair. But a son is your, who is your own flesh and blood will be your hair. Then the next thing God did was took him outside and told him to look into the sky. And as Abraham was looking at the stars, he was imagining that those stars, as they were billions out there, those were his generations to come. Those were his children. So God kind of brought him outside to activate the power of imagination. In order to introduce Abraham to his destiny, God knew he has to introduce what is called imagination. And the vision that God was trying to make him see at that point in time connected with the imagination. And God pronounced the blessing. God says, so shall your offering, offspring, so shall they be. So, um, imagination is something that can create what seems to be impossible. Because at that point in time, Abraham was already thinking, you know, well, um, let me start putting my house in order. I think I have an idea who is going to own the estate and all of that. But God changed that by refreshing is imagination. Imagination is an image maker. Vision and imagination also have the potential to create forces that can bring things into existence. And then still talking to Abraham, verse 12 said, a deep sleep came over Abraham and God revealed more information about his future generation, what they are going to go through, how they are going to get to the promised land and all of that. So the three things that came out to me in this single chapter was God communicated with Abraham in three different solid ways in the same chapter. Vision, the word of God, and dream. So when you're talking about dream, dream could be daydream, which is, you know, the imagination, and it could be night dream. And God used both in this case. God went through all three of those to establish a covenant in the heart of this person that he loves so much, introducing him to his destiny and purpose in life. Then I look at Joel 2, because I was looking, I said, ah, vision, dreams, and all that. I look at Joel 2, 28, and the Bible says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, which is the word. Your old men will dream dreams. 
imaginations or dream of the light of the night and your young men will see vision i see all those three things coming into play again so i was like okay vision word and dream has something to do with imagination and when i was pondering what came to me was these are there to give you a direction and also to empower your imagination so that you will not think amiss you will not go outside of what God wants you to see. So imagination powered by God is the, is the state of mind that allows us to, 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 to be free and enlarge our, 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 our thinking beyond the limited realities. If, if God will work on God, I mean, on, if God will work on Abraham's imagination, I believe that God is telling us something according to his righteousness. It be, and then the Bible says, because Abraham could see by imagination, now he believed. Well, he couldn't believe for years. Now he was able to step into it. And the moment he stepped into it, the Bible says God counted that as righteousness. God counted that as righteousness. God can do much more if we will surrender and let him be in the driver's seat. He wants to work on our imagination. He wants to give us the word. He wants to give us the vision for our lives. He wants to empower our dream, whether through imagination or by revealing things to come to us at the, uh, uh, you know, when you sleep at, at the vision of the night. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray if God is so interested in imagination and he has used this to, to bat nations. I believe there is nothing that can stop you if your imagination aligns. And we're going to pray. Let us begin to pray. Uh, you know, Abraham was hanging out with God, having a cool time. And, uh, you know, a lot came out of that. So we're going to pray like our relationship with God. We want to see total surrendering like God help me to surrender to you because I know what you have in stock for me. My mind may not be able to conceive it because it is limited. But what you have in stock for me, extend beyond generations. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to pray that we, according to Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live by the works of the flesh. I belong to Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I surrender my imagination. I surrender my thinking. I surrender everything. Father, and I am beginning to understand that I am a steward. Everything you have given in my care is so that you can use it for your glory. I own none of it. You own it all. Father, I surrender everything to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am in Christ. It is no longer the flesh of sin. The, the, the flesh uh, of sin that lives. But it is Christ that lives through me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the life that I live, I live by faith. I live by faith. I live by faith. I live by faith in the name of Jesus. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, I live by faith in Jesus' name. Let us begin to consecrate ourselves. Let us tell God, we are here as a vessel. In the name of Jesus, make us a vessel unto honor. Make us a vessel unto honor. Because at the end of the day, when we stand before our maker, it's going to be what have you achieved? Like the, 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 the parables of the talent. What have you achieved based on the gift I give to you? I give you 
natural gift, which are your talents, and I have sent you into the world to go and preach the good news. I also gave you a gift, which is the spiritual gift, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you use both? The Lord Jesus Christ, did you accept him? The gift that I gave you to go forth and bless and be a blessing to the nation, what have you done with it? God is going to want to examine those two gifts in our lives. Let us begin to pray. We are vessel unto honor. We will not disappoint him when we stand in the front of before our maker. We will not be we will not be wanting in the name of Jesus. We will not be short in the name of Jesus. We will be vessel unto honor in the name of Jesus. He will tell us, Welcome, my faithful servant, in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray that the Holy Spirit will brood over our imaginations. The Bible says in Genesis 1 2, and the heart was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Holy Spirit began to move. The Holy Spirit began to move, and God said, Let there be. And because the Holy Spirit was already incubating over, over all the head, he was already doing his thing. The word of God came with power. I'm telling you, sisters, God can fix everything, no matter what it is. If it's broken, God can fix it. Let us begin to pray that our imagination will surrender to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us, oh God. Our imagination will glorify you in the name of Jesus. It will connect us to purpose. It will connect us to destiny in the name of Jesus. We will use the power of imagination, Lord, to achieve that which you have called us to do in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray for insight. It is another thing to stay with the Bible and read it as, as a novel. And it is another thing to stay with the word of God and the word jump out of you. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray for insight. Lord, give us wisdom. The, 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 give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 2, 6 says, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And then Ephesians 1.18 says, the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, that we will know what is the hope of our calling and what is the riches of his glory in us, in the name of Jesus. Father, open our eyes, so God. Open our eyes, so God. We will see through you in the name of Jesus. We will understand your word. We will receive the revelation of your word in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, open our eyes. Give us insight into who you are. Oh, Father, we put so much limit on you. Father, forgive us, oh God. You are way bigger than what we think. You are way bigger than what we can describe. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Give us insight into who you are in the name of Jesus. My spirit is sharpened in the name of Jesus, and I receive from the Lord. I see visions. I dream in the name of Jesus and I understand the word. I have insight into the word in the name of Jesus because if, if, if we cannot receive from the Lord from all these three avenue, then it's a dangerous place to be. God, open our eyes to see beyond this natural realm. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to us, oh God, through our imagination, through the dream of the night, oh God. Father, speak unto us, oh God. Speak unto us through your word, oh God. Let our mind be enlightened. Let our mind be transformed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. And then we're going to look also at, you know, the power of imagination still. And I think I, I tried to say imagination is the heart of, you know, of seeing what is invincible to others. It is a gift. It is a gift. It has many positive applications, but there is the, the sinful imagination is always rebellious 
to God. And we see that in the case of Tower of Babel. That was the story can be found in Genesis 11, 1 through 9. And as children of God, when we worry and we allow fear to create or we, we visualize things from the eyes of worry or anxiety, those negative meta images has the, 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 the ability to attract negativity. Because your, your, your body is kind of wired to respond to your mind and your mind responds to what the picture or whatever you create on it or you feed it by. That's why the Bible says, guard your art with all diligence. Your spirit man is righteous. If you can allow the spirit man to feed your mind, your imagination will be pure. Will, will be pure. And as children of God, we are redeemed. So is our imagination. It is a platform for the Holy Spirit to be able to brood as it was brooding when God was going to create heaven and earth. The power of the inner vision is when we can see through the eyes of the Spirit. And we see through the eyes of the Spirit, you know, beyond the natural limitations. Beyond the natural limitations. There is a principle that comes with this. And you can activate that principle all day long. If you can see it by the eyes of the spirit, you will activate that principle. And the new sight will be your reality. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do much more than we can act or even imagine, according to the power that is at work in us. There is a power at work in us. There is a power that can, that can you can call the blueprint. Just like a printer, a, a painter, you know, has a preconceived idea of what he was gonna paint. The blueprint is already given unto us. It is in the word of God. And that is why we have to get to where we get the rhema of the word, which is the specific word for you at that specific time. If we spend time in the presence of God, it will shape in our imagination. It will create our reality. Watch what you, what, 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 what have you been saying? What do you see? What do you see about yourself? What do you see about your future? What do you say about circumstances around you? And sincerely, like I mentioned earlier, whatever you say or do or think has the potential to also create a new blueprint. So that is why we have to consciously, consciously, consciously Stay in the word of God and let it shape in our imagination. What do you see about yourself? What is in your subconscious mind? We all use our imaginations all the time. So no one can say, I don't have it. Yes, we do. We all see things in the picture. If I tell you a red apple, you have a picture already. That is your imagination. And you can channel that the same way you just saw a red apple. You can channel it to your life. Most people will dwell on the past. They will dwell on the present and not so much on the future. And that is dangerous because, you know, people are so tied up looking at what, um, what, what the sunset of yesterday and they, they miss the, 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 the sunrise of today. There are things that could fog or cloud your imaginations. If we allow imagination, if we allow the imagination to run wild, that means you, you, you allow it, you, you just think of you know, things, naturally the mind will think of what is natural to it, which is not gonna be in line with the word of God. But if you if you 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 cannot just allow the your mind to do what it pleases, you have to gain control. You have to consciously visualize the mental image 
that will move you closer to your dream. The Philippians 4, 8 says, brothers, sisters, whatsoever is true, honorable, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy, think of this. And, you know, I know our time is fast spent, but one thing that can destroy imagination is ungratefulness. And I found that in Roman 121. And it says, when they knew, when they knew God, they know God, but they did not glorify him as God. Neither were they thankful. And God gave them over to vain imagination. That is not our portion. And I'm looking at that verse, and that tells me that the strength now of your imagination is when you begin to thank God consciously, give him thanks. Put your imagination in check with the word of God. When you, are, when you are spiritually strong, your assignment will locate you. Your vision will locate you. The provision will locate you. And practical steps I want to leave with us today is reading the word and creating an inner image, an inner version of what you want to be, what you want your life to become. You can, when you have that picture in front of you, you can have a physical picture or you create a mind, a, a picture on your mind. Begin to speak in tongues, begin to pray over it. Do it every day, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes. Do it every day and allow the love of God to, to flow through as you trust in God that you are not just doing a fertile effort. You are standing in faith. I am telling you, sisters, you continue to do that. Eventually, your life will look exactly like that image that you put before you and prayed over. Is it favor? If you feel like ah, everybody is always hand tight, then begin to see yourself being favored. People go out of their way to bless you. Is it ministry? Begin to see that the power of the Lord begins to flow with you. Children, healing. Begin to see your body like you drink the blood of Jesus and you gain that energy. Begin to see promotion, life partner, businesses, whatever it is. Stand in the place of prayer and begin to create that image. And by God's grace, in the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit will brood over it because it is in line with the word of God. Your heart is right. The power of the Holy Ghost will begin to shape things. It may not look like it. You may not see the wind. You may not see the rain. But the valley will be filled. That's what the Bible says. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Father, we are praying today that you will redeem. You will redeem. You, I, we know we have a, a, a redeeming imagination. We're praying that you will sharpen our imagination in the name of Jesus. You will sharpen it by the word of God. In the name of Jesus, our, our imagination will glorify you. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to pray. Our imaginations begin to go. We will not just allow anything to just you know, a free zone. No, we are the children of God. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, sit down imagination and every I thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That tells me you have that power. God is bringing into captivity everything to the obedience of Christ. Oh, Father, help us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Our imagination is redeemed. Our imagination is sanctified. In the name of Jesus, it will bless the Lord. In the name of Jesus, it will be used for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for a mind, that, a sound mind, a mind that thinks like God, a mind that acts like God, a mind that is united with God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let us pray that the Lord will help us keep a prayer posture as a legacy. We will not be weary. We will not be tired. In the name of Jesus, in every circumstance, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we will stand our ground. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, help us, Holy Spirit. We will pray without season. We will give thanks without season. In the name of Jesus, we begin to thank you for our future right now because we know the Holy Spirit has started to work on our imagination. He's working on our heart. He's changing things. 
things. He's changing things. He's turning it around. He's making it to glorify him in the name of Jesus. He's making us a new man in the name of Jesus. We are a new man in Christ Jesus. Oh Lord, we give you praise because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. Let us begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, we will walk the word. <laughs> We will walk the word in the name of Jesus. We believe whatever the word says about us in the name of Jesus. It is not by might, it is not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord says the spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, we will walk the word. We will walk the word. The word became flesh. The word will come in the name of Jesus. In us, it will become flesh. We will see the impact of the word in our lives in the name of Jesus. It will give glory to God in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 4, 40, 31 says, those that trust in the Lord will find new strength. We will find new strength. We will soar like eagles. We will run and we will not be weary. We will not faint. We will not be tired. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord. Let us begin to pray that we receive faith for our Christian journey. In the name of Jesus. We receive power to trust and to surrender to the word of God. We come against worry and anxiety in the name of Jesus. We decree and we declare our vision is clear in the name of Jesus. Our vision will not be fogged in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are justified by faith in the name of Jesus. We have peace with God. According to Romans 5, 1, 3, Daddy, we thank you for the work that you're doing in our life. In the name of Jesus. Let us also pray that we will not fail, we will not faint, we will not falter with our relationship with our King. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hope. We have the hope of the Lord, the hope that makes not a shame. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you because you establish us in your will. Thank you because you establish us in your way. Thank you because you establish us, oh God, in what your purpose, what you have for us, your plan and purpose for our destiny. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to give thank thanks to the Lord. Let us begin to give sacrifices of thanksgiving and begin to worship him. Because like I mentioned earlier, praise and thanksgiving will empower your imagination. And you will be able to see the glory of God penetrating through you to others, to yourself and to others around you. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. According to Psalm 50, 23, we offer thanksgiving a sacrifice unto you in the name of Jesus. Show us your salvation, O Lord. We trust in you. Father, thank you. Thank you for the power of imagination. Thank you because you have blessed us, O God. We, re we, we, we bless you, Lord. We receive, O God, all that you have for us in our destiny. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. And we will turn it over for the persecuted church. Amen. So I'm still in an attitude of prayer. We're going to be praying for a persecuted church in Central African Republic. So just a little background. The president of this country is Faustin Archarge Teodera. Uh, the government is um, a republic. Um, the main religion in this country is Catholics and, is and Islam. The source of persecution is Islamic oppression. Uh, the population of this country is 4.7 million, which is about 90% Christians and about 10% Muslims. So it's a predominantly Christian nation and it has experienced some ethno-religious violence since 2013. The violence began when the Seleka rebels um, representing the country's Muslim minority overthrew uh, the then you know, reigning president, David Dako. Christian you know, military responded to this overthrow with violence, attacking and erupting um, you know, the country. And so this back and forth battle um, has estimated about 2.9 million lives have been lost over the past six years. So let's just lift up this country before the Lord right now. Let's just thank him. Father Lord, we just thank you. Thank him for the Christians in this country. Let's thank the Lord and bless him that, you know, he will, that they are the majority 
in this particular situation. Let's thank him for how he has sustained them and helped them. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 19, it says, For them, um, from them will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing. I will add to their numbers and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor and they will not be disdained. So let's just pray that this country, that their population will remain, that even that 10% of this radical Islamic population will hear the word of God, that the population of the Christians will be sustained and they will be empowered in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray that the Lord empowers and strengthens his people, that they'll remain encouraged despite all the fights and and tumultuous wars that are going on over the past six years, that the Lord will keep them and they will remain focused even under this persecution. Joshua 1 verse 9 says, I have not commanded you. Um, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let us pray that the Christians will be of good courage. They will continue to trust in the Lord. There's a way that, you know, you can see all these things happening and you're wondering where is God or wondering even though we're the majority, why is this happening to us? That the Lord will keep them. He will empower them. He will strengthen them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray that God will give wisdom to the Christians to be able to continue to spread his work, to continue to do his goodwill, that in spite of what's going on, that they will remain strong and steadfast in his word. Second Timothy chapter four, verse two says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. Let us pray that they will continue to do his work. They will continue to do his will. They will continue to show love. They will continue to spread the word of God even in the midst of what's going on. They will continue to show love to their neighbors. They will continue to show love even to this Islamic group. They will continue to show that the love of God is the strongest of all, that they will remain steadfast in the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray for God's protection over these Christians, that he will rescue them and protect them from all harm. Psalm 59 verse 1 says, Rescue me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from those who have come to destroy me. And also 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and protect you from all evil. Let us pray that despite everything that is going on, that the Lord will protect the Christians. It's constant killings, it's wars, it's kill, it's burning of churches, it's just fighting that goes back and forth. Even though the population of the Muslims are only 10%, they are radical Muslims and they're willing to give up anything and everything including their lives for their own cause. So let us just pray and ask God to protect the Christians in this country, that they will continue to remain steadfast and protected from all harms, despite all the fights that are going on right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray for God to touch the hearts of the Muslims, to turn them to him. John chapter 3 verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So even though these Muslims are persecuting the Christians and fighting and creating war in this country and destabilizing um, in the political situation in this country, let us just pray that God will touch their hearts. The Bible says the hearts of kings are in his hand and he turns it whichever direction he pleases. Let us pray that their hearts will be softened, that they will hear the word of God and they will be touched and moved and they will also convert to Christianity in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray that God will make a way through missionaries and outside organizations to further his kingdom for peace to reign in this country in the mighty name of Jesus. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 to 14 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the name on the one that they have not believed in and how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard and how can they hear without someone preaching to them let us pray that the word of god will be spread abroad in this country in the mighty name of jesus that missionaries and organizations will continue to further the kingdom of god for peace to reign in this country in the mighty name of jesus and even in the most subtle ways even in ways that they don't even expect through people that they come in contact with through social media through contacts that they make that they will begin to see and hear the word of God and the light of God will begin to shine in this country in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us thank God for what he has started and for what he's going to do in the Central African Republic in the mighty name of Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let us just pray that God will take absolute control of everything in this Central African Republic country in the mighty name of Jesus. That from the, from the political to every other aspect in this country, that God will take absolute control. That his word will be spread abroad. That the love of Christ will be seen 
even with what's going on, that God will allow peace to reign in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Father, we exalt you because we know your word says where two or three are gathered in your, in your name, you're in our midst. Father, we know you're in our midst and we know that you hear us. Father, we lift this country, the Central African Republic before your holy throne and we ask that, Lord, you take absolute control. Lord, we know that there's Islamic oppression that's taking place in this country. We know that there's destabilization and wars that have been fought over the past six years. We know that people have lost their lives. But Father, regardless of what's going on, we know that you reign and you rule in the affairs of men. And so, Father, we commit this country before your holy throne. We say that you take absolute control of the leaders. We say that you give them wisdom to navigate during these times and seasons in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that this will be an opportunity for your children to rise up, to rise up to what you have called them to do in the mighty name of Jesus. That Christians will rise up to show love, to spread your word, to do your will according to your um, according to your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you because we know you're touching the hearts of the Muslims. We know you're turning it around for your good. We know that you came to die even for such as these in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we know that there's nothing that is too hard for you to handle. We believe by faith that, Lord, there's a change. We believe we'll begin to see a turnaround. We believe there'll be testimonies. We believe lives will be touched and saved for your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. We know that the evil one will not have a hold on this country because the earth is yours and including this country. Father, we bless you. We exalt you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, the honor and the adoration for answered prayers for the Central African Republic. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful prayer. And we know, uh, you know, every time we pray, a seed is sown. We will reap, we will reap, we will reap the reward of those prayers and sow with the countries in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Uh, thank you, sisters. It's been, uh, you know, another refreshing time in the presence of the Lord. Um, we want to welcome all our new guests. Um, if you are here and you're new, please just um, kind of put your name in the chat and our admin people will welcome you. We just want to feel, make you feel welcome and be part of us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'd love to have you. And um, we hope that you have been blessed and, um, you know, feel free to invite, you know, um, your friends, family. Uh, this, is, this is the altar of God. And we want to see as many people um, to come be partaker of what the Lord is doing on, in, on this altar. So thank you so much. Welcome one more time. And uh, if you have any question at all, just also, you know, reach out to the admin or put it in the chat. Uh, command the week. Every Monday morning, uh, we have uh, command the week. And uh, it's a 30 minutes uh, prayer session. And um, it's been led by uh, Pastor Nike. And usually uh, the time is 12 a.m. Eastern. And then 5 a.m. BST, 5 a.m. WAT. So please uh, be part of it. It's a good way to actually start your week and, you know, speak life into the week ahead and be able to actually sit down and, and, and see what the Lord will have you do for that week. You can, you can, use, you can use this to kick off the week. Uh, so please be part of it. It will be on Monday, uh, 12 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. BST, 5 a.m. WAT. And uh, the call, which is the prayer session we just uh, finished, um, is every Saturday. Uh, please be part of it. We intercede for our loved ones and we also pray for the particular church and we want you to be part of it. So if you're looking to lead in any of the session, uh, please reach out to us, reach out to someone in admin or you can even put it uh, in the chat. Um, yeah, for more information, you can reach out to us. Uh, we're always live um on instagram oh okay this is um instagram life inspiring con con conversation today today okay 
this is happening today. Please join us at 12 p.m. Eastern, 5, 5 p.m. Is it 5 p.m.? Okay, 5 p.m. BST and WHC. We're going to be having um, our lovely um, host, Dolapo. He will be sharing some tools you can use, you know, to influence your world. So please be part of it. It's 12 o'clock today, and uh, we hope to see you there. Invite people. You would never, you know, you, I'm sure you can pick up one or two things that uh, will work for you as you grow. So look, looking forward to seeing you. Also, we're going to have a virtual tea party, uh, which is coming up July 18. Uh, so join the EPR Women's Network. On the 18th, uh, is going to be interesting. This is a virtual uh, tea party, and um, you know we're just going to be having a lot of fun. Uh, we have some people panelists that will be sharing some insights with us, and the time is on, on about the same time, 12 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. BST and WAT. So we look forward to seeing you be part of it. And EPR Gifts, um, partner with us, please. We're looking for about 100 faithful women that will just say, you know, every month, this is what I am dedicating uh, to the work of God going on here. It doesn't matter how much. It, it could be as little as five, ten dollars or as big as the Lord has blessed you. But, you know, we're looking for 100 faithful women. And I know there is nothing impossible with God, so we are counting on you. Um, you can give by setting up a monthly direct uh, deposit. Uh, the information is on the screen. And uh, we also want you to be part of KIB Foundation, which is what, uh, where we take care of the children that are a little challenging their health. And we just support some ministry um, to make sure that they get the necessary insulin out to these children. You, you don't know, you might be saving a life or more, more lives. But please be part of it. We're looking for people to really step in and help us carry the vision. Um, yeah, um, KIB, yes. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of the main team today. Um, thank you uh, for the time you have spent with us. We are grateful and we know that, you know, whatever we, we have prayed about, we know that the Lord will, will brood on it. It will give you, it will be your exceeding great reward in the name of Jesus. Your prayer in and out, you know, will never go in vain. In the name of Jesus, will never be in vain. You will see the reward of your prayer. You will see the reward of your labor as well in Jesus' name. So thank you for being patient. Thank you uh, for being part of this. We look forward to seeing you this afternoon and next week, Sunday, uh, next week Saturday. God bless you. I hope I didn't miss any, anything. Um, God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in a little bit. Have a fantastic uh, weekend. Enjoy your July 4th. I will be doing some barbecue, so maybe we can meet on virtual meeting again after the one we have at 12. So see you ladies. Thank you. Bye. Was that fun? <laughs>